Welcome to Violin Lounge TV, where you learn to play the violin and viola with body, mind and spirit. This is your host, violinist Zlata. Hello, in this episode of Violin Lounge TV, I've got a guest. And he's called Stephen McMillan and he has invented a new shoulder rest. And why I'm interested in interviewing him is that this is not the... Uh, a uh, 10th or 20th copy of uh, Wolf or Kuhn rests, <laughs> because that wouldn't be very interesting. Um, it's actually something really new, so that's why I am interviewing him here. Uh, Stephen, could you perhaps introduce yourself shortly? Um, you are a violinist too. I will get some lights. Yeah. <laughs> um, perhaps you can do a little intro of yourself, uh, where you're coming from and uh, how, you, uh, how the idea came. Uh, to create a shoulder rest. Hi Zlata, thank you. Um, yes, it's it's something of a long story. I think we all have a similar experience though. Um, we uh, eventually begin to struggle with the, the higher, the more advanced playing and, and so the issue of, of how to have the good posture comes up. Um, and I'll tell you the truth, uh, um, originally this this concept came to me as a way to improve the tone of the violin and um, what happened with me was I like so many I tried all of the other shoulder rests I really did I have a I have a big box filled with shoulder rests and dust um, from all of my experiments uh, and each one of these I will I will give them credit each shoulder rest design has its its good points and then its weaker points too um, so at the at the time when I became when I became very angry at the shoulder rests because um, in those days the materials were not as good as they are now, uh, and also this most of these designs are quite stiff. So um, I'm playing a solo and the shoulder rest goes kabang off the side of the violin. So. After, after this experience, I'm so angry that um, I, make a, I make a promise that uh, I will never use a shoulder rest ever again. So for almost 15 years, I play with no shoulder rest in the, the old fashioned way. Um, and then I, I bought a very expensive violin and I was noticing the difference between when my shoulder would touch the back of the violin and when my hand would hold the violin a little higher. And I felt like the tone was a little more pleasing uh, when my shoulder was not touching the back of the instrument. So this began my um, idea to, to create something which was naturally shaped like the violin, but which um, would stay only around the edge of the instrument when you when you put it behind the violin, and I showed this. Um, I showed I, I I made this creation out of an old violin that um, was beyond repair. I went to the violin shop and asked them if they have a violin which is which is going to be destroyed. It's only in the garbage, uh, and they said, "Yeah, look over there." So I. I I took a violin and I said, I'll give you $10 for this. And they said, that's fine. So I took it home and I took a saw and I cut this violin, which was, which was actually a very good experience, I think. Uh, I cut this violin and took away the, the portion of the back, which is shaped like this. And I put some soft leather around it so that it, it wouldn't scratch the, uh, the surface of the instrument, and also was very um, clinging to the clothes. And I put this on the, the violin, and I began to practice, and I realized, ah, there's the tone that I'm looking for. So uh, I go off to rehearsal, and I sit down with my stand partner in the orchestra, and I, I begin to practice, and she suddenly looks at me and says, did you get another violin? And I said, no, but I think I have made a discovery here. And little by little, people uh, examined this, and they thought that the idea was good, but they, they needed for themselves something 
that gave them more space and more support and more contour. And that's later on, uh, I was able to create a set of uh, little pads that I'm going to make the sound that come apart with Velcro so that you can, can create a shape for yourself which is pleasant to your shoulder and can, of course, be changed um, as often as you like, as you change or if you wear some kind of different clothing. Okay. Well, what's interesting to know, you are a professional violinist yourself, so you have tested this among colleagues, uh, I understand. Um, and uh, you're telling that some people like a lot of space in their shoulder rest. Can you maybe explain uh, why it's not a good idea to, because there are a lot of uh, strange things you see if you look around in the orchestra, a lot of big constructions that people are building buildings uh, under their chin. Uh, yes. Could you maybe for the viewers explain why that's not so uh, such a good idea? <laughs> you mean, you mean uh, filling the space very, very tight with... Yes, exactly. Uh, well, and in fact, I can conduct this experiment using with, using my shoulder rest. I have I have made uh, sometimes uh, a contour for the rest, which is quite high, but which fits very well. So it's it's made just for me, but I'm filling this space completely. And what I discover is that it it does not allow enough freedom. Um, Every, every in, in really healthy playing, there needs to be some ability to make some small adjustments um, without a feeling of tightness or that the muscles have been pulled uh, too far. Um, exactly. Um, yeah. And is the reason why you uh, uh, promised yourself to never use a shoulder rest again? <laughs> Is uh, because I, I know more people who switch from using a shoulder rest to using nothing, uh, yeah. exactly for the reason of freedom of movement and uh, not having a slipping shoulder rest. Uh, were these reasons for you? Because I understand it was mainly for tone production, for difference in tone. Well, I discovered along the way, um, in, and, and I must say at the time when I made a determination to play without the shoulder rest, um, I did not do this very scientifically. Um, I, I, I just made myself do it, and I learned some. I, I learned some valuable lessons from doing this. Uh, there's something to be said for this old-fashioned method of, of not using the shoulder rest. Um, but for a professional player today, um, I think if you're if if you're playing a solo. Uh, this is not as much of an issue because the soloist, the the soloist comes and for 20 or 30 minutes they they dazzle everyone and then they go home. The rest of the orchestra will be there another two hours. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then and maybe that's only the first one today. So uh, three hours plus three hours, and then if you're lucky and make some more money, three more hours. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I think professionally, this is a, a problem for the, the player who is busy all the time to, to make something which is a little less effort. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, and I, in those days, we didn't have so many choices with the chin rest either. Okay. And I noticed that um, a few people have made some uh, wonderful experiments to fill in the gap with much higher chin rest. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, maybe I would have done things a little differently if I had explored that, but I, I really just with determination made myself play without the shoulder rest and then realized later on that I'm putting a great deal of effort into doing this and I, I think I need to relax a little more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and is there a type of chin rest that fits best with you, together with your shoulder rest, or is that very personal? I, that's extremely personal. Okay. You, yeah. you know, there's, there's a wonderful video um, uh, about this topic only, about the chin rest, yeah. which has been made by um, Hilary Hahn. Okay. Yeah, and she explains, it's almost nine or ten minutes long, she explains very carefully 
how she came to adjust her chin rest. Uh, and her father was uh, a handy craftsman, and so they would make um, a little experiment to. So they, she would put some uh, Vaseline on her chin and then press on the violin. And from the place where the Vaseline would mark the chin rest, her father would shave away some of the wood so that the chin rest for her is a completely uh, personal item. And she encourages people to explore that. She mentions even the shoulder rest, but she's very wise uh, to say, I'm not going to show you what I use because then a bunch of you will go out there and will do exactly the same thing, which will be completely wrong for you. Yeah. Uh, but I will explain, and she explains the process okay. of how to develop the right, the right fit. Yeah, I'll uh, certainly look uh, into that, because a lot of uh, people think that, uh, I'm asked also a lot, what kind of chin rest do you use, what kind of shoulder rest, and then uh, you need to explain that it's, uh, coincidentally something that fits my body and my way of playing some uh, people teach to play, uh, to hold the violin like this or a little bit more like that and then your rest automatically have to be different and uh, so only if you hold the violin exactly <laughs> like me and have exactly the same body then probably you can use the same rest but <laughs> if yeah. you're this little different then it probably yeah. can be something different yeah. I've been temp I've been tempted to tell people that I, I make this shoulder rest out of cake, you know, and, and to see how many of them will go and put a cake on the back of their violin and try to play this way, you know. Yeah. Of course it's not made of cake. Don't do what I do. Yeah, Just exactly. Make make a good experiment to find the best thing for yourself. Yeah, yeah, and it's very dangerous too because I know also teachers who tell all their students you should use exactly this chin rest and exactly that shoulder rest and uh, because it's just the chin rest and shoulder rest they like which is very um, um, right now I'm um, I'm speaking and, and developing some experiments with uh, some uh, kinesi kinesiologists um, okay. to make some measurements of the of the forces that go into into the neck and shoulder and these measure the the range of these movements to play the violin and um, let's see what am I going to tell you about that I can and, oh yes my my personal uh, question that remains unanswered is what happens if we create a, a, a device which uh, which fits the chin and the shoulder all in one piece and then, and, and only after we find a natural and strong way uh, to fill the space, then, only then, do we take the violin and move it into position and relate it to this already established adjustment. But this, this seems a little bit expensive, uh, and right now there's not enough foundation for for uh, creating such a product, but uh, ideally, you know, yes. perhaps in the future, this will be uh, the smartest way. Yes. Also, also, I noticed that with 3D imaging, uh, we can take a, a small device, only maybe as big as your telephone, and we can scan this portion and maybe even print a shoulder rest for you uh, yes. in the near future. So. Yeah. I'm working on all of these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah it will certainly be uh, uh, be possible. Um, is it perhaps possible that that you uh, maybe demonstrate how one can, because your shoulder rest can be adjusted in various ways, mm. uh, maybe you can demonstrate it a little. Of course, it's different for every person. Uh, but maybe yeah. you can show a bit what you can adjust and how, what the steps are uh, if one orders a shoulder rest, a shirt on rest. Um, sure. What, where do you start? <laughs> well, you start when you take it out of the package. Uh, you, you find uh, the the parts are separate so that you can make an adjustment. There it is. Um, and the first thing is to take only the natural shaped part, uh, which holds everything together, uh, and match it up to the back of your instrument. I'm going to stand here for you. Yeah. Uh, uh, match it up to the back of your instrument. 
and the thing which which makes it um, not interfere with the sound of the violin is that it has these little cushions underneath around the uh, the edge, so that it's really not touching the back of the violin. Maybe you can see underneath there. Yeah, it's important for people to know. I think that yes. this, uh, the the shirt down rest is not touching the soundboard. It can may seem if you look at it like this that it's on the soundboard, but it isn't really, because there's a space yeah. between the rest and so you have space here. So yeah. the shirt on rest only touches the edge of your filing. And it's yeah. very important that you, that's what, what I just, first thing I discovered, that it's very important that you put it on your violin, that it really only touches the, so you don't put it on like, like this or something, uh, yeah. because then it doesn't work. Well, it works, but you have less sound. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, I'm glad we can explain this in a video because in a in the photographs, um, it's it's not so attractive in the photograph, and it's hard to understand this portion. But in real life, it is it is uh, more pleasing than it looks. <laughs> um, the other the other part, and this is quite normal from for some other products too, but. Uh, the fasteners are very durable. They're uh, not not the normal rubber that you see in rubber bands. Uh, so it's a little stronger, more durable. And it attaches uh, in the center over the button. And then for each of the corners, there are sets of fasteners. And you can you can move these through the slots to make them tighter or looser as you need to to center the rest on the back of your violin. So this this part remains very stable, uh, especially if you use all of the pieces uh, on top and underneath, put all of the bands over the button. Uh, make sure that your violin has a nice button on it, uh, which is automatic if you have a nicer violin uh, and can be replaced if you have a, a violin which has a button too small. Um, and after that, the rest is experimenting. Some people, of course, find that only having this, uh, this in place to avoid the slipping is good for them. Yeah, uh, probably it, it will add just a little bit of height, but, you know, almost like some other violin would be thicker. It's, it's in this range. It's very small. Yeah, it's probably something for people who uh, play without shoulder rest and want it to slip a little less and then they can leave it like this and uh, have something similar. Precisely. Um, the rest of it is adjustable according to the player. These, these, uh, these cushions, I'm going to make the Velcro noise. Everyone knows this noise. Um, and uh, with these little cushions which are wedge shaped and round, you can spin these and attach them to the rest. You can stack them up. Uh, most people, in general, some people do this the opposite way, which is fine. Uh, but in general, most people prefer to have the forward side of the rest uh, to be a little higher so that they flatten out the contour of the violin. And I'm just tapping it into place so that it's easy to remove and adjust. And I'm looking for something which fits against my shoulder yeah. in, in the most, you know, the most comfortable way. Exactly. This is, this is uh, an experiment which you can perform endlessly. Yeah. <laughs> As with uh, every yeah. other product, you can experiment along uh, for years. <laughs> yeah. I, I have, uh, as many years as I have used my own product, every once in a while I make some uh, small move and I go, oh, even so for most people, this, um, what we would call uh, in Texas, this saddle shape um, would be, um, would be the, the most usual adjustment. I, I have had customers uh, write to me because they have some special physical problem uh, with uh, uh, some uh, medical treatment or some, some deformity that they already have. Uh, and using uh, materials like this, they can make something which is 
completely individual to themselves and that they're, they've been very happy with that. Ah, good. Yeah, yeah. It's also all very soft, so you don't have things pushing or sometimes you have the coon rests with the edges and stuff that uh, point... Uh, you know, this this is very individual too because you say it's soft, I say it's it's pretty soft. Some people say, oh, it's so hard, I, I could I couldn't use something like this, so, um, okay. you know, there's another product that we all know about, it's called the Play On Air, mm -hmm. and um, I, I, I think the product idea is quite good, um, but sometimes it's a bit of a problem because uh, the way the Play On Air attaches to the violin, it's very slippery. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have some customers who take... Uh, the solid portion of my shoulder rest and they make an attachment with the Velcro uh, to their play on air okay. so, so that they can use the play on air product and stop worrying about slipping or falling off and uh, they're very happy with that adjustment. Okay. Um, we'll say too when you once you make your explorations for and I recommend you do this for a period of days or weeks mm -hmm. even, the, the best test of a shoulder rest is not how it feels the instant you put it on, but how it feels after you practice uh, three or four hours a day for two weeks. The, yeah. you know, then you really know something about yeah. the shoulder rest. So once you've found the most pleasing arrangement for the pads, when you remove it and store it, um, take everything off together uh, so that you don't have to make this experiment every time that you you put it together so then you know that this is adjusted your way and it can remain that way uh, maybe a stupid question does it fit in the most uh, <laughs> regular cases um, if you have uh, I, I discovered a case which is is the oblong uh, type of case and in, in my instance, it fits perfectly on top of the storage compartment. Okay. But I know, I know that for most students who have a case which is not so expensive, um, this is, this is a, a problem uh, in general, that there is almost no storage in these smaller cases. Yeah. Um, so I recommend you, you know, uh, perhaps I should produce something too, which is... Uh, a container for the shoulder rest. Uh, uh, everyone on Violin Lounge will be the first to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very nice. Yeah, you can also, it's quite flat, so you can maybe try to fit it in your sheet music compartment or something yes. like that. Uh, yes, yes. So. That works for some people, yes. Um, uh, are people using um, uh, more different, because you say you can fit the play on air on it, uh, are people using different things like pillows or whatever? Um, or do they only use uh, the things that, are, that go with it? Uh, so far I don't have any reports that they're using um, other materials that they've selected. Um, so uh, so far, so good with the the version that that's available now. I call this one the original, okay. and uh, in a, a period of months or within the year, uh, perhaps there will be uh, some new generations that are uh, like we all want to be lighter and faster and stronger. Um, uh, and um, we were talking earlier about these new scientific materials, which. Uh, on command can probably adjust to the size of the shoulder and then when you're through either you make a voice command or you push a button they will then collapse flat again and so each time that you install the rest on your shoulder it will have a, it will sense where to go yeah exactly so that's the future you can it's the it's the future, and, and it could be the present, except that it would be very, very expensive right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They already have the technology to scan people and then 3D print their shoulder rest if, uh, exactly. if they uh, like. But on a more uh, short-term future, what are your plans with the uh, shirt on rest? Are you going, because they are already available in Viola, uh, Viola I always pronounce it uh, wrong. <laughs> 
<laughs> Luckily, I play violin. But <laughs> bratje. Sorry? Bratje. Yeah, bratje. Yeah, <laughs> it's easier for me. <laughs> uh, it's in Dutch, Altviel. Germany is our neighbor country. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and they are already available in children's sizes, as I... Uh... Yes, I, uh, I, I make them um, all the way from 1 16th, which is a standard small size. So seven sizes for the violin and uh, three standard sizes for the viola. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, if the, if the viola player has a, an instrument which is quite large, or in some cases, uh, I have been sent tracings of instruments which are made in a modern design, mm -hmm. and so they are completely unlike any shape uh, of the traditional viola. They're, you know, uh, uh, shaped like uh, some piece of art. Okay. I have been able to create rests which uh, conform also to that. Yeah. Yeah, because you make this uh, form out of, uh, uh, I think it's, it's plastic. Well, can you tell what's, what's the material of the rest? Yes, it is plastic. Okay, okay. And it's a kind of foam on the top because people can see the shape, but they can't see the material that it's made of. Yeah, and then it's covered with neoprene foam uh, and some other kinds of uh, rubber material for the padding. <clears throat> and. Um, so the plastic is firm, um, and the the padding is soft and will, like the tires on your car, it will grip uh, really well onto your clothing or your skin. Okay, okay. And um, uh, people can order it on your website, I understood? Yes, of uh, course. If people are watching and they say, well, I'd like to try it, and uh, they can order it at your website. Uh, if uh, uh, someone views this video and uh, he or she has a very strange shape of electric violin, uh, can they email you about it? Uh, yes, they can. It's yeah, funny you should mention that, but uh, yes, I've created a, for a number of these electric violins a special shape, uh, which of course has the function of my shoulder rest, but then matches the 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 strange and artistic shape of the electric violin. Okay, very good. Yeah. Are there uh, any other things you would like to mention about your rest? Any other advantages or uh, maybe share some stories or whatever? Uh, are there things you uh, want to say uh, uh, about it? Well, I, 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 maybe a story. Um, my, of course, my professional colleagues here in the in the orchestras in the performing business, they're aware of, of what I've created, and um, because professionals, uh, students are very receptive to to good advice. Students like good advice. Professionals, they they have they have done things a certain way for a long time, and even though they're uh, having some problems they are not so likely to change these things. Yeah. And so if I'm sitting in the orchestra rehearsal and things are very quiet and I hear a, a shoulder rest fall to the ground, you know, um, I know that they're using something which is not the sure tone rest. Yeah. And, and so I, I, in the old days, I used to remind them, uh, you know, I have a solution for that problem there. And they go, I know, I know, I know. I'll try it, uh, and so now I just um, just give them the look. I look and I say, "Hmm, maybe not a sure tone, huh?" Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they say, "I know, I know." <laughs> so you are uh, uh, still playing professionally in the orchestra. I understand you are not full time uh, uh, shoulderist. Uh, no, producer? I. I just I have too many interests. I have a I have a I play chamber music with my trio, the White Oak Trio. Okay. So we do a little touring with the trio. Um, I'm uh, the concert master of a couple of orchestras nearby here, and so I'm always busy learning a solo or an orchestra concert or uh, preparing for a trio recital. Yeah, I think that's very nice to know for uh, viewers that you don't just sell shoulders to rest, but that you actually 
uh, constantly uh, are in, uh, being a musician and test it and show it along uh, uh, colleagues. So I think that's yeah quite appealing as opposed to big companies that uh, only want to sell a lot of shoulder rest. So uh, I think that's also very uh, nice to know for people. Um, yeah. Yeah, don't make a mistake. I do want to sell a lot of shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> so order 10 if you see this. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, if you uh, uh, have shared everything you want to share today about the rest, I think everything is clear. And I'm sure that uh, people can, of course, email you if they have additional uh, questions. Okay. Um, then I would like to thank you for taking the time for this interview, for sharing the information, and of course for uh, adding something uh, different to the uh, to all the chin rest and shoulder rest that uh, are available. And it's very nice to know that there are uh, still new things that are being uh, designed and that uh, come on the market because sometimes the uh, violin market can be very rigid and uh, new things don't always. Uh, get introduced, so I'm trying to help here a little bit to show people what's possible and uh, uh, that they really have the information to see if it's something for them to at least uh, try out. Um, so, uh, um, are, there, are there some dreams or wishes you have around shirt on rest? Well, dreams. Hmm. Or around the way people see shoulder rests or uh, around the way people play? Well, I, I just, I think the best thing for most people is, is to be um, patient with the process of, of discovering the best adjustment. And some people even say to me, oh, you make a shoulder rest, you must make all of your students. That's another thing I do is, is I teach private lessons. Okay. And they say, oh, you must make all of your students use it. And I say, no, I do not. Because if they come to me and they have a beautiful... Um, relationship to the violin already and there are no problems no. I never even I never even mentioned this thing but if if they are clearly um, out of adjustment or if they are spending half of their lesson time bending over to pick up the shoulder rest from the floor then I say there's something we need to do different yeah, yeah. there is an alternative to uh, what, what they're using uh, at the moment that's all so fair yeah, nice to know. I've got also students with uh, without shoulder rest or with or with the pillow or with the play on air or whatever, and maybe soon with uh, shirt on rests. Uh, so I think it's very important for people to take the time and effort to try different things, uh, and also really give it the chance that they don't just you know fit it all out. It's nothing for me, but really try to uh, give it a chance and really try to uh, find what's suitable for them. So that's. Uh, well, I think it's everything is clear, so uh, thank you very much for taking the time and effort and uh, uh, sh uh, for sharing all this information. Um, so, I think that was it. <laughs> it was a pleasure to do this, very oh, nice. Thank you. It was a pleasure for me too, thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Violin Lounge TV. Zlatter has a gift for you, the free workshop Weight vs. Pressure. In this, she will teach you how to play the violin or viola effortlessly and comfortably. The secrets to creating a beautiful tone and to touch people's hearts with your violin or viola playing. Weight vs. Pressure includes the 30-minute video masterclass Weight vs. Pressure, the 44-page workshop binder and the Weight vs. Pressure body scan you can do yourself. People use it as a valuable reference for years. Go to www violinlounge.com forward slash free dash workshop. Fill out your name and email address, go to your email inbox to confirm, and Zlatter will send you the login details for the workshop within one hour. Enjoy happy practicing and beautiful playing.